Picture yourself in the hazy summer of 1978. Your heart racing as you settle into a dimly lit movie theater, the scent of buttery popcorn lingering in the air. The anticipation in the room is palpable, and you can feel the collective excitement coursing through the audience. And then, it happens, the first spine-tingling notes of the soundtrack begin to play, setting the stage for your very first encounter with the 1978 cinematic sensation, Parada. As the film unfolds, you're transported to a world where terror lurks beneath the surface, where nature's deadliest predators are hungry for more than just fish food. The suspense, the shock, the sheer thrill of the movie keeps you on the edge of your seat. And when those razor-toothed piranhas descend upon their unsuspecting victims, your heart skips a beat, and you find yourself holding your breath, fearing that at any moment, the water around you might just turn crimson. Memories of that first screening might include the nervous laughter, the gasps, and perhaps even the frantic jolts in your seat, all etched into your cinematic history. For in that unforgettable moment, Piranha forever left its mark, blending fear and fascination, leaving you questioning the safety of your next dip in the water. But now, let's dive a little deeper and uncover some intriguing random facts about the show that will surely reignite your curiosity about this classic thriller. So, hold on to your seats as we explore the hidden depths of Piranha. Released in 1978, Piranha is a cult classic horror film directed by Joe Dante. Inspired by the success of Jaws, the movie explores a similar premise, involving deadly, mutated piranhas terrorizing a river resort. With its B-movie roots, Piranha blends suspense with dark humor, setting it apart from traditional horror. The film's notable characters, including an ambitious scientist and a skeptical investigator, add depth to the story. Its unique style combines campy horror elements with social commentary, making it a satirical take on environmental concerns and government secrecy. While not a blockbuster, Piranha achieved a lasting impact on popular culture, inspiring sequels, and a 3D remake in 2010, cementing its status as a beloved entry in the horror genre. In short, Piranha is a cult classic that uses humor and horror to tackle environmental issues, leaving a mark on the horror genre and spawning several adaptations, making it a memorable cult favorite. In the 1978 movie Piranha, there's an interesting tidbit about the film's score. It cost $10,000 to produce the musical score for the movie. This might not sound like a large sum compared to today's film budgets, but back in 1978, it was a significant chunk of the film's overall budget. The score, composed by Pino Danaggio, added a thrilling dimension to the film's suspense and action, enhancing the overall viewing experience. John Sayles, a key figure in the making of Piranha, used the profits from the film to kickstart his own projects. Sayles not only acted in the movie but also wrote the script, marking his debut as a scriptwriter. The success of Piranha provided him with the financial support needed to pursue his future endeavors in the world of cinema. Additionally, at approximately 54 minutes and 30 seconds into the movie, there's a notable scene where Colonel Waxman, played by Bruce Gordon, turns off a television that is interfering with his conversation. The TV had been playing the 1957 science fiction monster movie The Monster That Challenged the World, which featured a plot similar to Piranha in that it revolved around deadly creatures that could wreak widespread havoc if they managed to escape into the ocean. These insights into the making of Piranha shed light on some interesting aspects of the film's production and the career of one of its key contributors, John Sayles. The film's financial success and connections to other monster movies of the time make it a notable piece of cinematic history. The unraveling of Universal's lawsuit against Piranha in 1978, a movie titled Piranha Made Waves, not only for its horror-filled plot but also for a legal skirmish that could have been. Universal Studios attempted to sue New World Pictures, the production company behind Piranha, claiming it was a spoof of their 1975 blockbuster, Jaws. However, a surprising twist in the tale occurred when Steven Spielberg, the director of Jaws, got a sneak peek at Piranha and ended up loving it. This turn of events led Universal to drop their lawsuit, bringing a new perspective to the film industry. 
Piranha showcased menacing fish, which were brought to life by attaching rubber puppet fish to sticks. This simple yet effective technique allowed the film's creators to craft the terror-inducing piranhas without the need for expensive special effects. It highlights how ingenuity and creativity can outshine extravagant budgets. Bradford Dillman, a respected actor, initially had reservations about his character's two-dimensional nature in Piranha. He approached the writer, John Sayles, to inquire why his role lacked depth. Sales explained that Roger Corman, the film's producer, typically didn't focus on character development in his movies, often casting less experienced actors. However, because Dillman was a real actor, he was encouraged to enhance his character's depth, which added a layer of authenticity to the film. In conclusion, Piranha not only delivered thrills and chills but also came close to facing a legal battle with Universal Studios. The use of rubber puppet fish to create the ferocious piranhas showcased the film's resourcefulness. Moreover, it exemplified how one actor's dedication can add depth to a character in an otherwise straightforward genre. These elements contributed to the film's unique charm and success. In the 1978 movie Piranha, directed by Joe Dante, there was a notable scene in a cluttered lab. While the two main characters were busy exploring, a small two-legged humanoid lizard creature scuttled across a countertop, unbeknownst to them. This stop-motion monster was a nod to the legendary special effects artist Ray Harryhausen. Director Joe Dante had originally intended to feature the creature multiple times in the film, with it growing larger on each appearance. In fact, he had hoped to conclude the movie with a colossal version of the creature attacking a pier. However, budget constraints put an end to that ambitious plan, making this little lizard's cameo its sole appearance in the film. The novelization of Piranha also sheds light on Maggie, one of the characters. When her boyfriend walked out on her, she hired a private detective to locate him. As the story goes, she became so engrossed in the detective work that she decided to become a private investigator herself. By the time she finally caught up with her ex, her motivations had shifted and she was no longer interested in why he had left. Additionally, in an interesting twist, the climax of the movie originally featured Maggie counting to 300, not 100 as in the final version. This alteration was likely made to keep things realistic, as it's doubtful that Paul could have survived being underwater for such an extended period. In the world of low-budget filmmaking, Piranha faced its fair share of challenges and adjustments, resulting in the quirky and memorable moments that made it a cult classic. And that's the intriguing backstory of the 1978 movie Piranha. As we draw the curtain on our journey through the waters of 1978 seconds Piranha, I invite you to dive into the depths of your own memories and reflections on this cult classic. Like a school of piranhas swarming a prey, this film may have left a lasting mark on your cinematic experience. Whether you were on the edge of your seat, captivated by the thrill of the chase, or found yourself chuckling at its playful parody of creature features, Piranha has woven itself into the tapestry of your movie-watching history. Now, take a moment to ponder your connection to this film. Was it a nostalgic favorite from your childhood, or did it introduce you to the deliciously dark world of B-movies? Perhaps you've watched it with friends, sharing laughter and screams, creating unforgettable movie nights. Or maybe you appreciate its satirical commentary on nature's revenge, reminding us of our own environmental responsibilities. We're curious to hear your stories, your favorite moments, and your unique take on Piranha. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments or share them with your fellow movie enthusiasts. After all, the beauty of film lies not just in what's on the screen, but in the conversations and connections it sparks. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic voyage through the waters of Piranha. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Until next time, keep exploring the depths of cinema and storytelling.